Um, we've heard during uh, the previous very interesting session how innovation has been driving in the semiconductor industry. We'll try to focus in this one on how innovation can also help on climate. So following the COP27 Paris Agreement, countries now representing about 90% of world GDP have pledged to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions uh, to net zero by 2050. Carbon is also very high on all corporate boards agenda, following pressure from investors, but also customers, and increasingly stringent regulation. More and more corporates are uh, uh, publicly stating their targets to net zero and are actively working on their decarbonization plans, which by the way, very often uh, translates into uh, investments to modernize their industrial estates. But actively reducing um, the, uh, the, the CO2 emission will not suffice. Uh, a gap estimated to 10 gigatons of CO2 per year is estimated that will have to be removed uh, from the atmosphere uh, moving forward via nature-based solutions like reforestation or via technology-based solutions, namely carbon capture and sequestration solutions. Uh, as a result, energy transition and decarbonization uh, require massive investments. And as outlined and stressed by uh, IMF recently, there is so much that public budget uh, can fund on this front. So many countries um, like uh, Canada, Sweden or Singapore uh, have been imposing a tax on carbon emissions and uh, to foster proper behaviors, systems like emission trading systems, um, uh, schemes, sorry, are implemented in regions like Europe, uh, whereby corporates are allocated based on uh, uh, their carbon intensity, a given number of uh, free quotas per year and overperformance can trade them on an exchange. The voluntary carbon market comes on top of these mandatory schemes or um, uh, compliance markets. Uh, issued on the back of carbon uh, avoidance or removal projects, uh, the carbon credits are purchased by corporates eager to accelerate their path to net zero. So they are a way to channel and fund uh, projects and project developers uh, that otherwise would uh, be very hardly bankable under traditional project financing criteria. So some refer to carbon credits as to the currency of decarbonization or the net of net zero. A few weeks ahead of COP28, this session is aimed at providing a, a little color around uh, the voluntary carbon market value chain. And it is my pleasure to host today um, uh, but panelists representing uh, innovative uh, startup solutions, starting with Mariam Almansouri, general manager of Rebound, Sam Atwood, founder and CEO of Air Capture, um, Christine, uh, Christine Ingilarusen, uh, head of CapFix development, uh, business development and commercialization. On Visio, we have Sam Jill, co-founder and CEO of Silvera. And we will start now with a video interview of Annette Nazareth, who is the chair of the board of the Integrity Council for the Voluntary Carbon Markets, actively working on the foundations, uh, foundational principles of this market, which by nature is totally bottom-up and today unregulated. Mm -hmm. 